four months, y'all. That's how long it's been since we've done what I'm about to do today. Are you ready for this? It has been way too long since we fired up the old LSG. And you know what I say? Hey, it's above 30 degrees today and sunny. Who cares if there's still snow and ice everywhere? Let's fire this baby up and have some beef rib fun. Let's get her going. about 30 minutes later we've got a rip roaring fire I've got logs packed all around those hot coals but not really touching the hot coals much other than the back of this log right here is down on the coals in the back but uh, these other logs are just surrounding everything lots of air pockets lots of airflow and even with this door cracked to get my fire started good for the last 30 minutes we were still able to get up uh, to internal temps of it was about 250 260 when I checked it a minute ago before I just did those little adjustments but we're already headed up to 300 and if you know anything about my smoking philosophy hot and fast you know I don't mind that especially on a 30 degree day it's chilly outside it takes a lot of energy to heat up 500 pounds of steel so uh, I'm letting her flow and uh, we're gonna just uh, get these ribs unwrapped and start putting them on and once once we hit 300 I'll start cutting it back a little bit um, but I don't mind cooking at the 275 to 300 range uh, as you know now again with the Lone Star that bottom rack in there is going to be 25 degrees cooler than whatever this says the top rack is going to be 25 degrees warmer so even if this is hotter than what I would like to be cooking at I can put my meat on the bottom rack and still have a nice 250 to 275 on these beef ribs. All right, now that we got the old Lone Star fired up, let's head back inside and let me show you what I got from my butcher. Uh, about six pounds of beef short ribs. These are beef plate ribs. These are not beef back ribs. Make sure you don't make that mistake. Beef plate ribs are much higher quality, much meatier and of course more expensive than the beef back ribs that you find in your grocery store. A lot of times you have to go to an actual butcher to find these beef plate ribs. Uh, if you Google it, you can find some good info, especially at AmazingRibs.com. Um, they have a great breakdown of the different kinds of plate rib cuts that you can get. Um, I just had the butcher leave these whole, but you can get them cut all sorts of different ways. This is only the second time I have ever cooked beef plate ribs. The last time uh, the butcher cut them into individual ribs, and I enjoyed that. That was great, getting uh, rub and bark on all sides. But I've never cooked them as a whole plate like this before, and a lot of guys on YouTube have videos of that, so I wanted to try it myself and see, uh, you know, if I liked it better, worse, the same, indifferent. Um, so these are both great-looking uh, plates of ribs. I mean, they're at least two inches thick raw and once you start cooking them and that meat draws up in the middle these babies get three inches thick they are meaty 
Um, a lot of guys refer to this as brisket on a stick because it's just that rich, fatty, beefy flavor um, that you get from brisket, but on a rib bone, which makes it awesome to eat. So we're doing dino ribs today. Normally I would only do three layers of rub on my beef, uh, but I'm actually going to do four today and just do lighter layers because I really want to mix in um, on my second layer uh, a sweet rub that I'll show you here in a minute. This first rub is one of my favorite SPGs that I've been using lately. It's the Ranch Fixin's Steak Dust that TexasFood.com sent me out for free to try. And that has been an awesome SPG. I'm just going to do the tops and bottoms of both of these ribs with this Ranch Fixin's Steak Dust. And uh, the same thing with the other rubs that you'll see here in a second. You can see now I'm coming back with that sweet rub. Uh, I didn't always put sweet rubs on my beef, but uh, I have enjoyed experimenting with that. It's pretty delicious. Uh, doing my Cosmos cow cover for the, um, technically the third layer on this rack, but uh, I look at it as the second part of the second layer. That sweet rub and the cow cover, um, I look at those as a mix for my second layer. And then this final third layer is, uh, again, what I've been using a lot lately on my videos. An awesome rub from right here in Minnesota um, that's called, uh, that's the Outlaw Rub from Bootleg Spice Company. Outlaw Surf and Turf. Goes great on prime rib, great on ribeye. And as I'm about to find out today, it went really well on beef ribs. I made a mistake of not um, putting some mustard down first. I don't usually use binders. Um, but when I'm using this much rub, it, it really, I found it necessary to use a binder. So uh, I used that trick that I've used before when I forgot to put down a binder on the back side there when I had all four of those rubs down and realized they weren't going to stick very well when I flipped the ribs over. Just hit them with a quick spray of canola oil or uh, whatever kind of oil you got on hand and it helps that. Um, it's, it's not as good as putting down a binder first, but in a pinch it'll do. Got my binder down though. On this top side, that first layer of rub had already adhered pretty well so it didn't mess it up. And I uh, came back down with my second layer of my sweet rub, my Cosmos, and then my Outlaw Surf and Turf just like I did on the top. Or just like I did on the bottom rather. Here I'm showing you all four rubs. Um, one at a time slowly so you can see exactly what I was using and you can go check them out online if you so desire. I'll also try to remember to put links down below to each of these. You might have noticed that I was intentionally sprinkling some rub off the ribs onto the butcher paper earlier as I was rubbing the ribs so that at the end I would have some on the butcher paper to uh, sort of stand the ribs up on and tap them into. I don't get too worried about uh, rubbing the sides and the ends of, of square cuts like this. Not that big of a deal to me. Um, as long as the top and the bottom are covered well. But uh, I did leave a little bit behind there just so I could come back like this and tap the meat on it and pick up a little extra flavor. All right, we're smoking. Got my Maverick hooked up, using all four probes again today. Our meat is up in the 50 degree range already. And a minute ago, um, these were up in the 250 and climbing range because they hadn't quite normalized yet, but they were about uh, full 12 to 14 degrees apart, left to right, um, which is right in line with the 10 to 15 degree difference that Lone Star claims for these pits without tuning plates, which is awesome to be able to get 15 degrees or less of a difference left to right. And again, there's 50 degrees top to bottom. You have a cooler zone on the bottom, which is where I have my beef ribs today, and a hotter zone on the top. I will likely uh, switch that up at some point, especially if I wrap these ribs in foil with a little bit of beef broth at the end. I'll probably put those up on the top rack to keep that broth hot and to uh, steam these a little bit at the end. But uh, we'll see what happens. Just so you know, even with a not very big fire, now it looks big because of that one little log in the front is blazed up right now, but there's really not too many coals um, not even half 
of that fire grate is covered in coals and yet because of the momentum I built you can still get this smoker up to 340 degrees it was a minute ago 346 I think even on a 30 degree sunny winter day uh, this is good thick steel this baby insulates well I'm bringing the temps down rapidly right now because obviously I don't want to be above 300 uh, 275 would be even better but even on the bottom rack uh, there we go, up in the 340s. And by the way, if you notice, the left side of the smoker is actually a little bit hotter. And um, a minute ago, that was about 7 or 8 degrees hotter because of the way that air travels across the top. And then some of it swirls back down and comes this way. The left bottom is hotter than the right bottom, even though the right bottom is closer to that firebox. It's an awesome baffling system they have. And this smoker is legit. All right, folks, our ribs are at about uh, 165, 170. Uh, this rack on the right actually started out behind earlier in the day, but caught up and passed. All right, these are looking really nice. Uh, what I've done is I've put them up on the top rack. I'll tell you why in a minute. I've repositioned all my thermometers up here for the top rack. We're going to track that for the rest of this cook. Push this shelf back in. Uh, I'm not totally happy with where the bark is at. It's still a little bit soft. So that's why I'm going to throw them up onto this uh, top rack where they'll get a little bit more smoke. And uh, we will see how that goes. Uh, right now they're both at about 165 internal. I repositioned the thermometers, tried to find the best spots. I poured in a whole box of beef broth and a little bit of red cooking wine. And uh, I have these sitting up on a rack because I don't really want them to braise. I really want them to firm up a little bit more in that heat and in that smoke. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're about two hours, two hours and 15 minutes in. This will stall probably for a solid hour since I did not heat up the broth. But I like that because that's going to give it more time in the smoke and in the heat uh, to set that bark up a little bit better. And it'll probably take us two full hours, I'm guessing, to get to our 200 degree target temp. This, my friends, is a beautiful offset smoker fire. That firebox right now would make a fantastic pizza oven as well. We're about four hours in. I had a tremendous drop in temperatures because I let my fire die that, uh, during the third hour. So I've been running her pretty hot here in the fourth hour to catch up. Uh, the ribs are not going to quite get to 200 because we have company coming here in 20 to 30 minutes. So they'll probably finish up around 190. Um, won't be ideal. I would love to, love to get them to 200. But they'll still be delicious. They've still got amazing bark forming. And uh, man, those babies are looking good. Can't wait to cut into them. Have some barbecue chicken over here that I'm doing for a different cook, not on video. But uh, those ribs are going to be awesome. Absolutely amazing. All right, y'all. Moment of truth. Let's take these babies inside, get them cut up, have a sample. beef rib dinner uh, we had some company over I was in a rush uh, so I didn't taste them at the time they came off the smoker but uh, I saved one here and uh, I already showed you me cutting them up so you've already seen the good smoke ring uh, they're starting to cool off a little bit so my grease is starting to beat up but this is still gonna be delicious let's try one of these on camera for you and I'll uh, I'll give you a synopsis. 
First, I'm going to try the uh, non-bark side, and then I'll try some bark. Beef plate ribs may be my new favorite barbecue meat. It's the second time I've done them. You saw me do them a few months ago on an earlier video. I did them individually, pre-cut, before I put them on the smoker, so they got bark all the way around. This time I wanted to try cooking them as a plate, like a lot of guys do. I just want to try both ways. They're both delicious. I'd go back and forth on them. I can't pick a favorite. Um, these ones are amazing. Uh, the inside, even though I only got these to 180 because I ran out of time. Again, I made a mistake of not starting early enough in the day, but I had other things going on. And this channel is about showing you, um, honestly, minimalist barbecue. What can you do? least get away with uh, and still make awesome barbecue. Today I started at noon uh, with my meat prep, which was probably an hour later than I should have started. But even though these only got to 180 internal, they're still very good, delicious. Again, they're not falling off the bone like they would be if I had got them to 205. They're just so, so beefy and delicious and juicy. That beef rib flavor there's just nothing like it. They really are like brisket lollipops. Let me tell you how that rub is. Even though they've cooled off and sat here and softened up, that bark, it's not too thick. It's uh, it's just right. I didn't, you know, I did, it's not half an inch thick. It's not too, too dark and too sooty and ashy. I'm telling you, those rubs, that is such a good flavor combination. I highly recommend each one of those rubs. Using them together like this, they did not overpower the rib at all. Um... Not, there's nothing hot or spicy about this rib. It's salty. It's savory. Um, there's like a just a tiny bit of black pepper at the back of my throat, but nothing much at all. Just enough to make these awesome. Just enough to offset the salt. And you saw I put some of that maple sugar rub on here. A lot of guys don't use any sugar on beef. Um, the first time I started trying it was when I realized that Cosmos Q Texas Beef, which I thought was just an SPG, rub uh, actually has a little bit of sugar in it and I tried that on beef and it was amazing I recommend not overdoing it but uh, try a little bit of sugar on your beef ribs sometime it's really good really well balances that salt and that pepper and uh, this rub combo that I use today is just outstanding hope you enjoyed it great uh, a great barbecue item if you've never done plate ribs. Make sure you're not getting back ribs unless you intend to. The back ribs are, are much less meaty, uh, but these plate ribs are awesome. Huge amount of meat on them, huge amount of flavor. Brisket lollipops. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Nothing else like it.